ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय question has been sent to me by email regarding standards in varnashram communities in respect to shrila propad having stated that varnashram is not possible to be fully established in the present age at the same time shila propad stressed repeatedly <laughs> that varnashram should be established so it is to be established as far as possible this we can understand so the the uh, <coughs> query goes along these lines that this this is a very broad guideline as far as possible as there's, there's very little to find there's no definition the only definition is there there is there that is not fully but not fully can be 90 anything from 0.1% up to 99.9% so because if there's only 0.1% then it's not recognizable uh while trying to establish these communities practically we are we are finding much difficulty in finding the how much is possible the separating line by which practical decisions can be taken for example someone may say to wear that to wear a sari all the time is not possible for me to keep the hair tied always is not possible for me to not use laptops or mobiles is not possible for me and what if i used it in krishna's service etc so ah uh, let's discuss this mm clearly if there's going to be a community there there have to be some standards which are accepted by everyone traditional cultures they foster community consciousness rather than individual consciousness which is the uh supposed to be the hallmark of modern life or one of them the individuality everyone should think and do and act as they like with minimal concern for others we're trying to establish varnashram communities these are communities based upon the ideal of serving krishna everything should be for the pleasure of krishna krishnarth krishnarthe akela cheshta this is the motto of these communities everything should be done for krishna for krishna's pleasure so we have to know what krishna wants what does krishna want well he wants us to chant hari krishna that's the most important thing and to surrender our mind thoughts and actions and to him to cooperate together there are many things which krishna wants and therefore krishna gives us the guidance via the scriptures some things are more important than others whether or not to wear a sari is not a major point you can go back to godhead while not wearing a sari but you'll have to wear one in the spiritual world unless you're in her dynamic marriage is spiritual world where they don't have saris but in krishna's spiritual world as far as we know 
uh, from Srila Prabhupada, uh, women were saris, not men. Uh, so it's not necessary to practice Krishna consciousness by following so many sub rules. But they are there, there are, it's also there in Shastra. Um, and in tradition. There are many minor rules in Shastra which if we, if we even thought about following them all, we'd probably all collapse. Um, when Srila Prabhupada introduced deity worship in the West, in San Francisco, in about 1968, his disciples were at that time almost all from hippie background. The exception, maybe the one exception, was Jayananda, who was not a hippie, by background. But no idea of Vedic culture, absolutely nothing. We find, living here in India, those of you who are born in this country, and uh, those of us who have spent many years here, we find that devotees, when they come from the West and try to spend some time in India, they feel frustrated, in many cases, and the devotees who they're trying to live among also feel frustrated because there's a cultural gap. They're not used to all these things and the, the attitudes and the ways of acting and of Indian people, which is Indian culture, especially what we call Hindu culture, is based on uh, Vedic culture, although it's much diminished nowadays. Uh, but even devotees in the, coming from the West nowadays have some idea of Vedic culture. Something has trickled over, despite the uh, ongoing opposition to it within our movement. Uh, but in 1968, no one had any idea whatsoever. At that time, uh, Srila Prabhupada introduced deity worship. He had the deities of Jagannath Subhadra and Baladev carved by uh, one of his disciples, Shama Sunda. One time, Srila Prabhupada walked in to see how the work was going on. Uh, Shama Sunda was carving one of the deities and on the, on the head of another one, Jagannath, was Shama Sunda's box of cigarettes. I wouldn't be surprised if most of the Jagannath deities carved in Orissa are also carved by cigarette-smoking sculptors. I, I don't know if in their caste they have rules not to do so, but knowing Orissa in general, they're not very strict about these things. Although there are some castes even today, like, like here in Tamil Nadu, they may, may be shudra by caste, but they make jewelry and they have to put on the deities and they only can put them on the deities, so they are vegetarian, although it's breaking down nowadays. Uh, so there's no idea of Vedic culture, and uh, the deity worship consists of the devotees coming before Jagannath. At that time, they're mostly in their t-shirts and jeans and all this kind of thing. Uh, Jagannath was not dressed, and there would be a plate with one Deepam on it, one ghee lamp, and they would take it in turns to wave that in front of Jagannath. And that was the deity. And there must have been some kind of food offering also. So at that time, uh, Srila Prabhupada said that if I was to tell you all the rules and regulations, you would faint. He also said, I'm 80% more lenient than my Guru Maharaj. So there are many, many, many rules of Vedic life. And these are also given by Krishna. They're Vedic rules. Some are more important than others. But it's not that they're just rules for the sake of rules. They have a function. It's all based on the 
understanding that, uh, for instance, directions. One should sleep with one's head towards the east or south, and there are different, there are different these different directions. They're presided over by different deities, and they have different effects. We can nowadays they've analyzed the magnetic field and so many things, but they 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 have a reason. All these rules and regulations have a reason. And, uh, yeah. I, any flies there? There is. Okay. All right. So things like keeping women, keeping their hair tied. Uh, one reason is for, uh, there are several reasons for this. For, for chastity, not to make the hair overly attractive. Um, to keep the, for cleanliness, especially if they're cooking, so the hair doesn't fall in the um, cooking. For convenience, so the hair doesn't go all over the face. Uh, may, maybe uh, health reasons also. So we've heard. So there may be various reasons for this. So the, we want to establish Varnashram rules as far as possible. All these rules of Vedic life. Uh, this is Varnashram. And these devotees may, you may think, well, there's so many rules, it's too much. But actually, Grihastas, they're also in Grihasta Ashram. And Ashram means there are Ashram rules. And Grihasta life doesn't mean the only rule is that, that you just follow some, some basic, no meat eating, no gambling, no listening, no intolerance. But there's, in actual Grihastha Ashram, there are so many rules to follow. If it's actually going to be an ashram. Oh, excuse me. Otherwise, it's just home life, you can say. Maybe religious home life, but there. So, um, these communities are set up to give people shelter from the vicious modern way of life but to take shelter to get the protection one has to agree to loss of independence in the modern age there's so much outcry against crimes against women women being attacked in in the street and raped uh, this didn't happen so much, it was quite uncommon, in times when women didn't have so much independence. They clamored for their independence. Actually, in India, they didn't clamor so much. It was mostly just given out of imitating the West. Otherwise, there was no call, there was no mass call for it in India. And it seems like women in India, they've been given independence, but they don't really know what to do with it, many of them. Just like you'll see, they've... The, the woman is the mayor of the city and she, practically the husband does all the work and, and all this kind of thing. She's, she's shy because that's the way she's been raised. But, uh, <coughs> the idea, we'll have full independence and we'll walk around with, uh, clothing which is, uh, dressed in a way that is specifically meant to agitate the minds of men and we'll walk around at night time and uh, alone and then we'll protest if we're raped. So, for women to be protected, they or anyone to be protected, they have to sacrifice their independence. You can't, you can't have both. You, to the degree that you're independent, that, to that degree you are not protected and that's a principle in devotional service also as much as we take shelter of Krishna that much we are protected by him if we don't take shelter of Krishna then we're not protected so that much we take shelter of Guru that much we're protected if we don't if we don't follow the rules given by the Guru then by the order then we're not protected so, the rules are there for a purpose and the Varnashram community is to show the ideal 
and to give people the opportunity to live in a way in which they can be Krishna conscious. And all these rules help. It's it's not going to create the uh, the atmosphere of cooperation in Krishna consciousness if everyone has their own individual dress code and they, everyone does everything in the way that they like. Uh, so, um, in establishing communities, there should be rules laid out. That the, this is our dress code and this is our... Uh, Sadhana, everyone has to rise early in the morning and follow sadhana. This is our food codes, They're not that everyone's just doing whatever they like. Uh, uh, in one house there's very, or, or economic code, everything should be spelled out. And then if people agree, they want to live like this, alright, come. And if they're not ready, then don't come. That's all. The same, the same as in a brahmachari ashram. There are rules and regulations and if you're ready to follow, then all right, you can come. If you're not, then don't come. You can practice Krishna consciousness outside to the that independence if you want. If you want that independence, then you... <clears throat> uh, then you don't join the temple. You chant Hare Krishna at home. But if you want the benefit of living in the ashram, then you have to follow the rules of the ashram. So the same thing in the uh, the, the Varnashram community is mostly grihastas, but there, there should be rules that are to be followed. And if someone has an attitude like this, that, oh, it's too much for me, I can't do this, even with that kind of attitude, it's not a very... Not a good candidate for being in the community. So it may be that some devotees like that, they have, they'd like, they'd like some of the aspects of the community, but they're not prepared to follow all of them. Or it may be that one of the spouses is really prepared to follow and the other is not fully. So I would suggest in such cases, that they live a little bit outside the community and come and participate, but then within the... If they want to, for instance, wear... I don't know, whatever they want to wear. Instead of wearing a sari, then then don't, don't do it as a representative of the community. Because... Within the community, you, if you if you want to wear fashion and this and that, then go home and do it. Don't do it here. That would have to be discussed. Oh, then you have part-time members or partial members. Because the thing is that once you say, "Okay, we'll make an exception for one person," then everyone will want. To, everyone will say, well, "Why? Then why do we have to follow so many?" It, that will set a standard of just going down to people doing whatever they like. Instead of having a standard of, yes, we have our community standards and we all follow that. But as soon as you compromise that, then there is no community standard and it would be very difficult to get any community spirit or any direction at all. So it is required. Although these things might seem to be minor, like dress codes, tying up your hair, and things like that, um, unless that is established, then it would be very difficult to have a community. Um, so, who will say what is the standard? Uh, which standard exactly we should adopt because as Srila Prabhupada said it's not possible to bring in all the rules and regulations on the other hand we have to have rules and regulations and, and we would hope that in Varnashram community or we would expect that in Varnashram communities that there will be more adherence to traditional Vedic cultural 
behavioral norms uh, than oh, I got the stymied the translator there. There'll be more adherence to you can just say Vedic Kalacha just to make it easy without without all the uh, nuances of Vedic cultural behavioral norms. So just Vedic culture you can say. Uh, we would think there'd be more, yeah, there'd be more of Vedic culture than in, than among Grihastas in general who are living in the cities and just struggling to keep their family life running on and their economic situation running on and their devotional service. And that's one reason why we established these communities. It's a major reason because most of the Grihastas they're living in the modern world and the whole situation is quite non-conducive for Krishna consciousness. The association is bad. Why do we say the association is bad? Well, one reason is because people are materialistic <laughs> and they, they don't want to follow all these things and they want to have sense gratification and do whatever they like. Um, and then modern life forces us to work hard. Srila Prabhupada spoke of Modern civilization is based on working very hard so people don't have time and they don't have the atmosphere and they don't have the culture for this supporting culture. So this, we, the Varnashram community is meant to make a supporting culture for Krishna consciousness. But that means that everyone has to partake in it because if you don't partake in it, then it's not a culture. If, if culture means that people do the same thing. So if... If it's optional, then we don't have that Vedic culture. So that is required. Uh, there are many things which from the Gurukul they can be taught, such as sitting up straight. <laughs> yeah, that's good. That's better. Not slouching. So, uh, yeah, who will decide all these things? Well, you can see what is in Shastra, what are the norms, what is, and those who are the leaders of the community, they can decide. And if there is, uh, if there's any question about that, with, with the, with the general idea that we do want to go toward the traditional Vedic culture and make us few compromises possible. We didn't make these communities to make compromises. And if we want compromise, then we don't need a community. Varnashram community. So the leaders that can decide and then uh, ultimately can be referred to me because who decides what in the life of disciple? Ultimately, the guru has to decide on this. There are so many rules in the Shastra. Exactly what we are to follow uh, apart from the, the most uh, prominent rules like no meat eating, no gambling, no illicit sex, no intoxication, then in any ashram in the guru kul, the guru will will say this, this, that, that. He was, and that may be somewhat different from other gurus. But so uh, ultimately, you could uh, refer that to me. To not use laptops or mobiles, that would be very good. I'm going to recommend at our upcoming meeting in Puri that we make for all these communities. We have one phone, one landline to get out of this all the time on the phone habit. Unnecessary, distracting habit. Maybe if you're in a city, that's part of modern life and people can't imagine to live without them mobile phone. But uh, living on the land, well, what do you need that for? You may think, well, I'm in the field and I have to, I'd have to say, I have to call someone there in the ashram which is half a kilometer away. Well, you can develop a strong voice. Call out loudly. That's part of village life. In Bengal, in the villages, you, you hear, ah, ah, some are loudly, loud voices they can call. 
Or you can walk back. If you, or, or you may just leave it. It's not so urgent that you need, that you always need to be in condition. Slow down, cool down. The village life is meant for that. Laptops, they have their use, no doubt. Have you? Um, I know. Spend an average of a few hours a day myself with my uh, laptop. But for these communities, we want to create a different kind of culture. I use my laptop several hours a day because, mostly because I'm writing books. But the less we have these things, the more we have each other. That means uh, if we don't have a laptop to get lost in, then we can come together and chant Hare Krishna and discuss Krishna consciousness. Have morning and evening program fully. So that has its use and definitely um, for giving information of these projects and finding information about aspects of uh, rural life, agriculture that we don't know about. The internet is very useful, but that should be minimized. Maybe one computer for the whole project like this. When I go to these projects, I bring my laptop because my writing service has to go on. But I realize that that maybe doesn't set the best message for everyone. I hope they can understand. But uh, in general, we want to cut out from all these things. And, and building a community means that, yeah, for our recreation, you could say, this uh, yeah, recreation that, that is, uh, that's also mentioned in Bhagavad Gita, that, uh, what is that, Vihara, that word is given, not too much and not too little. What is that verse? Nachashnatastu yogosti nachai kanta Oh, it's in the verse after that. Yuktahari viharasya, yeah. One should uh, not eat too much or not eat too little, not be, not all the time be engaged in entertainment, but also there should be some, not all the time engaged in work also. So our vihara or our recreation is chanting Hare Krishna in the association of devotees, discussing Krishna consciousness, all these things. So you can do everything on the laptop these days. Yukta Hara, you can, you can order a pizza to be delivered to your door via the internet. Mostly people would do it by phone, I guess. Yukta Hara Vihara, you can get all your entertainment on the internet. Uh, Yukta Hara Vihara, sir. Yukta, what is it? Yukta Cheshta, yeah, Cheshta, I guess you could call that work, all your endeavors. Well, many people, they work. Yukta Swapna, I don't know if you can sleep. Here yeah, we have a geek over there. He could tell us how you can sleep. Just fall asleep in front of your laptop, that's all. And when you wake up, just get back to work again. But our, there's this life we want to show of being absorbed in Krishna, taking only Krishna prasadam, resting just enough to gain bodily strength to serve Krishna. Our, our activities, our recreation, if you like, in Krishna consciousness, everything. So, yeah, there's some points about that. Any question about this? No, all is clear. Yeah. 
Can Varnashram be established in the city, not in the modern city? The uh, cities are there in Vedic culture, Dwarka, Hastinapur. But the cities are, uh, are not, the, the, most people don't live in the cities. As most people live on the land. Urban culture is not the, is not the predominant culture. And uh, modern cities are based on Ugra karma, exploitation, commercialization, commercialism, consumerism. So this, these are not suitable for Varnashram culture. Not these modern cities. Srila Prabhupada wanted to establish Mayapur as a city on Varnashram lines. He gave the idea for that the, around the temple there should be the Brahmanas community, around that the Kshatriyas, around that the Vaishyas, and then around that the Shudras. But no one knows about this. So no, those who know, they, those who know do not speak. And those who speak, people say they do not know. But it's, you can find in one old back to Godhead from about 1979 after Srila Prabhupada passed away. This was very clearly stated. And there was, it was famous being circulated in our movement. There was a design that had been made by Saurabh based on uh, Srila Prabhupada's direction. How in Mayapur city there should be separate living quarters for the Brahmana, Kshatriyas, Vaishyas and Shudras. So there can be Varnashram cities also, but not this modern demoniac city, not that type of city. Hmm. How should one live in a modern city? Best not to. For preaching? That's the idea that we got from Srila Prabhupada. That if one is preaching, then he should be in the city. Otherwise, why live in these cities? If somehow or other you feel you're constrained to, then chant Hare Krishna and follow as best you can. But we see, we see that our movement has expanded a lot since Srila Prabhupada's departure, largely in the, what's called the congregational expansion. But the standards that were expected for devotees to be initiated when Srila Prabhupada was present have gone down as a concession to the congregational expansion. And that has osmotically come back into the temple communities also, so that the standards have gone down everywhere. But actually the standard is that one should have solid sadhana, follow all the principles, but but solid sadhana, how are you going to have it if you, if you, you have to, uh, work long hours and get the children off to school by seven o'clock and then the husband comes back at nine o'clock and you have to feed him and you take rest late, get up early and there's no time. No time. Nice set of teeth you have. <laughs> so in the city, is not not very conducive for, for Krishna consciousness unless one is attacking Maya by preaching. Otherwise, if you're just trying to survive, then uh, you may not do too well. And practically speaking, I, we see that, that the number of devotees is increasing, at least here in India, but at least according to what I estimate, I may be considered a harsh judge, but the uh, most of the devotees are very neophyte, even after several years in the movement, several years of being initiated. They often haven't read Prabhupada's books. They don't know basic things like you're not supposed to eat food cooked by non-devotees. And in general, a, a very uh, neophyte understanding and attitude. So... This whole idea of just increasing, 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 
without standards. Uh, it's, it's making everything very watered down, and we see that. They're just Christmas has just gone past, and the usual rash of uh, deities being dressed in Santa Claus outfits has gone past being protested. This is nonsense. <laughs> but neophyte attitude, people think, oh, we like it. The public like it. Does Krishna like it? Well, he must like it because I like it. And I, I don't know this. It's, how could you even think? It should be unthinkable, such things. But this uh, very neophyte mentality is uh, pervasive in our movement. And if we, if we, if if we make everything easy so that people can come, more people can come and join, and the, then uh, there's no, there'll be nothing of any substance left. We, we should understand we're not in competition with Sri Sri Ravi Shankar or any of these bogus gurus. Yes, bogus. I did use that word. We don't use such words if we don't want to offend people. <laughs> if we don't. We don't want to drive people. If we say things like that, people won't come. People will come. People who are intelligent enough to understand that these people are bogus. If we don't state clearly that all these people are bogus, then we'll get all kinds of bogus people joining us also. And they'll end up dressing Radha and Krishna in Santa Claus outfits. So, we're not in competition. We're not in competition with Christians who are on a conversion uh, campaign. We want to give people the actual Vedic message of surrender to Krishna. It's not just a matter of getting in more and more and more people and numbers and. Uh, mm. Standard of day devotion to the side of the about cooking, you mentioned an item and how many times I eat, how many items are ready. Yeah. Because somebody asked me that uh, if there's anything Shri Prabhupada given different standard for family day devotion. Shri Prabhupada gave uh, standards for deity worship. One of the reasons that people in India who many were very distrustful of Srila Prabhupada's followers in the beginning, one reason that many of them became convinced that this movement is genuine was because of the high standard of deity worship. Which has largely been compromised within our movement nowadays. We don't... Uh, I've seen centers in Europe where the deity worship is being performed by non-initiated devotees. And when I point that out, they say, well, it, it's only Gornita. That is the answer. As if, because it's stated that Gornita don't take offenses, therefore you can make the US, that means you can make all the offenses and it doesn't matter. It's not an invitation to make offenses. Uh, is there any relaxed standard for householders? Srila Prabhupada did give uh, different in, to different individual householders, he did give different individual standards for deity worship. Um, one of the standards he gave in one letter was that the Householders going to worship at home, they should be trained in the temple and they should follow the same standards in the temple. Most householders I see who have deities in our movement nowadays, their standard of deity worship is no standard. They do whatever they feel is convenient for them, that's all. In Hari Bhakti Vilas, it's stated that, that the standards at home need not be as strict as in the temple. That is stated. 
Yeah, Shalagram worship. And with Shalagram worship, you worship. And when you finish the worship, in the box. Yeah, or they may just be sitting on a throne like that. Brahmins would do Shalagram worship, but they used to do it very seriously also. It can be done very simply and quickly. But generally, the, the people who do deity worship, it's understood that you have to do puja at least once a day. Actually, the normal thing is to do puja twice a day. Uh, but at least once in the morning. And it takes, to do the full puja in any sampradaya, it takes at least one and a half hours. And to, to have deities without doing puja, previously this was unimaginable. You have deities, you have to do puja. Otherwise, why do you have deities? <laughs> so, people don't have the time, even if they had the inclination. And there's always the Gornitai dolls idea. Srila Prabhupada said we should just do Gornitai dolls. That's to the... But he said that members of the public, they can be instructed that you do this and do that, and then eventually they come to the devotees and they ask about how to do the proper standard. But instead the devotees take it that we will, we will treat Gornitai like some ignorant karmis might, and just keep them as dolls. So who, when they come to ask, what are you going to tell them? Devotees, those who are in knowledge, they should follow to a proper standard. From what I see, most of what goes on in the name of uh, deity worship at home and in many temples also in Iskorn is, is it's more it's more seva parad than seva. Sorry to say, but To ins- install deities when you when you're ready to serve them properly. Establish varnashram communities when you have devotees who are ready to follow and dedicate. Otherwise, it's hopeless. Hmm. Butterflies, deity worship. Yeah, go and look in temples in Bengal how to dress Gornitai. Probably they all have butterflies now imitating Iskon. Simple dhoti with chada like that. Radha Krishna, yeah, it would be similar. No. There are many descriptions of Krishna and Shastra. Pitambar Vesh, of course the deity, the yellow cloth, but in deity form he often wears other cloths also. In some temples they do different colors according to the day of the week, according to the uh, nakshatra, the star of the day. Hmm? You follow that here, yeah. yeah. Then on special festivals, they'll have special dresses. So you can do... This Gornitai is... Uh, he's, they're reciprocating with the unhappy parents who don't have children. They don't announce it. Well, they're announcing it. They've several cases of People, they didn't have children for years and they come to Gornitai and pray and then they come back a year later or so with the baby. Okay, Gornitai wants to reciprocate like that. You can't tell them not to. If he wants to give his mercy like that, he can. It's like Nushimha Dev in Mayapur. He's his... his Everyone knows, all around, all the Goryamats, all the local people, they know he's, 
He's very merciful. They go there to get all their desires fulfilled, material, which are more common, and spiritual. So, if he wants to reciprocate with people, that's his mercy. You can't ban him. Another important point to consider is that if you've already given up all of the city life and you're willing to come to live in the Varnashram community, it's such a big step. And then why hold back on just a few small things? If you're going to go for it, go the whole way. It's, it's some, after, after giving up so many things to, uh, hold back with some minor inconveniences, what you might consider to be some minor inconveniences, just doesn't seem to make any sense. Hare Krishna! Srila Prabhupada ki jai! Sri Sri Gaurindatai ki jai! Hare Krishna!